I had someone post and ask me, they are looking at getting a parrot, but they have some considerations like sound and budget. What does a smaller parrot cost? Let's talk about three categories. One that is going to be under $500, one that's up to $500. Maybe the first we'll say is up to two or $300. And the third category is gonna be up to $1,000. Hey guys, I'm Kaylin, the author of The Parrot Bliss Bond and the new book, Get to Know African Grey and Cape Parrots, both available on Amazon. If you're here to get inspired, get a good idea of what getting a pet bird in the U.S. costs and maybe what their maintenance will probably cost, then you're in the right place. Hopefully that'll help you get a great setup, minimizing your need to rehome or surrender your parrot to a rescue. Uh, this is Boatrix, my golden conure. It had been blue, my Quaker. And like I said, I'm Kaylin. Let's get started. Category number one. If we're looking at spending less than $200 a bird, and you've watched my videos, so you know how good and it is and how important to have two parrots. They keep each other company. They keep each other in well-being. They keep each other from getting needy, stressed out, and you will still totally be able to bond with them if you put the time in. The time doesn't count as ear nibbling or earring nibbling. Don't eat my earrings. So let's say that you're going for a less expensive parrot. Let's say you're thinking about maybe a budgie or a cockatiel because you know that they are phenomenal parrots. There's a reason they are two of the most popular parrots the world over. One reason, of course, is because they're more economical, but the other reason is because they're fantastic parrots. They're not really loud. They don't take a lot of space. They're not really mean or bitey. They're pretty fantastic birds all around. So let's say you're looking at either. You're going to be looking currently, um, a cockatiel, you're gonna be looking at under $200. And certainly the same is true with a budgie. Frankly, most American budgies are going to be probably under $100. An English budgie is often going to be more in the $100 to $200 range. Now, this is not a species difference exactly. Once upon a time, um, I believe it was the English, took budgies and tried to breed them to make them larger and a little more um, like easy to get along with kind of thing. So if you see a budgie that's bigger, and a little fluffier, a little stockier, that is probably an English budgie. If you see a smaller budgie that's thinner, more sleek, that's probably an American budgie. Not that either of them come from America or England. They are Australian. Now, um, if I were getting a budgie, you know something, I'd go out on a limb and whether it's English or not, I would plan on spending like $100. I might look at trying to find one that's hand raised, but the reason I would get one that's $100 is because when people really spend the time taking care of their birds, $20, $30, $40 for a budgie is nothing. Those budgies are often sort of like puppy mill raised, like they're just sort of in a farm, they're just allowed to breed like crazy until I think, until the parents burn out. It's kind of sad. Um, they're just sort of in it for the numbers and not for really necessarily taking care of a parrot and providing a quality life for a breed or parrot. That's not always true and there's no way really of knowing, but like I said, when people are charging more money for a budgie, chances are that, especially if they're a small breeder, not, um, a chain store or something like that and you might not have a choice I understand that um, you might only have a chain store around you I get that but if you have a choice a small private breeder might be more likely to sort of be really creating a quality life and I think it makes a difference plus I want to support that I want to support people being good to their parents that's why I would budget like a hundred hundred and twenty dollars times two their cage 
is going to be somewhere in the, the department department the area of uh, under 120 dollars now some of that does depend on the cage there are three basic kinds of cages you can get one is a wire cage a wire cage you can bend with your fingers it's fine for cockatiels and budgies even lovebirds and lovebirds will fit in this category too those are all birds that should be under two hundred dollars a bird um the the there's nothing wrong with that wire cage the paint does come off after a while uh it will work for those birds but it just won't last you a long time and the next kind of cage is usually a wrought iron cage that is like powder coated with paint that's a pretty good cage it's gonna last you longer and it is going to um, not be bendable you won't be able to bend it with your fingers kind of thing the third kind of cage is going to be a fancy either aluminum or stainless steel cage that's a cage that won't rust um, I don't, I mean, it might be painted or the metal might be painted. Like you're not gonna have to worry about the color coming off. No, uh -uh, uh -uh. Um, it's going to be a really good cage. That's probably going to last maybe even longer than your parrot kind of thing. The price difference in those cages is going to vary. That small um, cage the, where the wires are more bendable. Like I said, you know, you might be spending 150, but that's gonna be like at the top the wrought iron cage you could spend 250 I would expect it to be somewhere maybe under 200 to maybe 300 and then when you get into the aluminum and the um, uh, stainless steel cage I think they're gonna start at like four or five hundred dollars and probably go up it'll depend some on the size of the cage but you know those are expensive cages so um, they're worth it if you can afford it though, because you're just gonna have a good cage that's just gonna last you. What about a vet? What do I do about the vet? Uh, I like to take my parrots to the vet whenever they sneeze, not literally, but practically. When I get a new uh, parrot, I do like to take them in for a new parrot consultation. And that's a consultation with the veterinarian, sort of depending on the veterinarian, where they are going to give the bird a physical. They're going to check out things that you don't know to look for. They're going to look for things like uh, if their eyes and their nares are clean, if their vent is clean, uh, if they're fancy, they, they might even like look and kind of get a, a, at least sort of see their tongue. They're going to examine the bird's legs and wings and kind of see what shape the bird is in. They're going to be able to look at their feathers and in a heartbeat kind of have a pretty good clue about the, the um, bird's health and well-being. They hopefully are also going to run a gram stain and a culture. That's going to run about $100 depending on the vet. These are two tests that are going to test for yeast in the system. They should have good yeast in their system. If they don't have good yeast in their system, the vet will know if they do the gram stain or clostridium, this terrible bacteria that is no fun. If your bird has clostridium, their poops are gonna be stinky, very unusual. It's not impossible for a healthy parrot to have stinky poops, but it's very unusual. Uh, and then the culture is one in which they're going to grow Try to grow bacteria from your parrot's uh, poop and they'll often swab their vent and ever so layman terms put that means they're going to put the swab in their tushy to get a sample of that bacteria and that's going to give them a pretty good idea of some of the usual suspects so to speak when it comes to bacteria that your parrots might get so it's a nice way to get a fair um bill of health as far as does this bird have any diseases the next thing that your vet might charge you for and might do uh, i like to do it when i have a new bird is a chemistry panel they're going to draw blood and that blood chemistry is going to give them a pretty good idea um, it's going to show them like if their white blood cell count is elevated which indicates um, a infection and it's also gonna give them a really good 
screenshot, if you will, not literally, um, it's numbers that are either within range or out of range on their organs. So the chemistry is a pretty nice way to kind of know if everything in there is functioning well. So between the two, you're gonna have a really nice idea of your parrot's health. It's not gonna give you 100% of a picture of your parrot's health, but a pretty darn good idea. And if there is anything wrong with your parrot, hopefully your vet, vet can nip it in the bud and you'll start off with a good, happy, healthy parrot, which gets you going in a great direction. That chemistry, um, I think it's like around $100. Again, it depends on the vet. You know, different vets, I think, have different costs themselves. So basically, that new bird consultation, it is going to run you uh, anywhere from like $70 to $100 just to come into the office for that physical exam and use of the room and whatever it is, you know, whatever materials they use and your vet's time. It's gonna be about $100 for that culture and gram stain. And then I think 100, I can't remember exactly, for the chemistry panel. So if I take a new bird to the vet, it costs me 300, something like that, 350. It can cost you um, double that. Again, it depends on your veterinarian and what they charge. But you're looking at something like three to five hundred dollars. I know if you just got like a hundred dollar budgie, um, that seems kind of expensive. You may or may not want to do it. I recommend it because there's nothing worse than getting attached and spending the hundred and fifty on their cage, plus maybe um, another fifty bucks on food and toys, maybe more, and then your bird's sick, and now you've got a cage and food and toys and no bird. Like that's just no fun at all. So I think making sure that you have a nice, happy, healthy bird is a really good idea. In general, um, the cost for maintaining your parrot is gonna be something like maybe say $50 a month. And don't forget my three categories, and I haven't given you the last two, are smaller parrots. So they tend to eat less, that kind of thing. So food-wise and toys, getting them new toys, I don't think you're gonna spend $50 a month. And of course it depends on how many toys you get. You might budget $50 a month. Plus, if you wanna go get an annual exam for your parrot, which veterinarians recommend, you're gonna be looking at that about $70 to $90, $100 um, office visit, plus probably about 100 for that culture and gram stain. And then it just sort of depends on whether you've seen anything uh, that makes you think it's time for chemistry panel again or not, or what your vet thinks. So I would say, you know, that you might want to budget $200 a year to just sort of get that checkup for your parrot. And there are such things as parrot insurances if you want to look into that. Now, category number two, parrots that are going to be under $500. Uh, for that category, I'm looking at two cock cockatiels um, because I think you know that you're gonna find them for 150 to 200 dollars so when you get to you're still under 500 lovebirds they certainly are gonna be about the same range and depending on what color or factor of green cheek conure you're interested in if you want a green cheek conure I think that $500 for two mm, it's doable it might be a little low and it sort of depends a year ago, conure prices kind of went really high and then they came down. So some of it really depends on where you're getting your conure from and all sorts of other things like that. I'm saying it's possible uh, you may have to increase that, that um, your money just a little bit. Now in that same category, up to about $1,000, you can get other species of conures. For example, a crimson belly conure, although a crimson bellied conure is going to be about a thousand dollars so if you want to get two you are going to have to double that initial budget if you're looking at an australian parrot like a red rump a bork a rosella i think that those are all easily going to be it depends again on where you get it from that kind of thing but you might be able to get two for a thousand like they're you know 400 500 600 and again it just sort of depends on where you get your your bird but I don't think that should be too undoable. Then again, if you have to like go out of state to try to find a breeder or something like that, that's gonna add of course to your cost. So it also depends on where you live and what access you have. 
Um, you can also find a Brodogerius and, uh, for example, a Linny. These are all small parrots that I think would make a great house parrot or apartment parrot. They're not too loud, they're sweet. If you spend time with them, I think you're gonna love them and they're gonna love you. And again, the Brodo and the Linny, depending on where you get them, what species of Brodogerius, again, you're looking at, I think you should easily be able to do, to do two for a thousand. Um, and it might be a little less, it might be a little more, but the idea is to give you a ballpark on prices. So I hope that gives you some great ideas on some species, on what you kind of want to expect for your basic cage, food, toys, vet costs, and bird costs, so that you can have one of, I think, the best relationships next to relationships in your family, you know, with your spouse or your children or your parents, one of the best relationships you're gonna have in your life because this is a best friend who eats your earrings 24 hours a day. But seriously, you know, they're, they're real companions because they go through life with you because they're always with you, just like a cat or a dog, but even more, just way even more. Thank you for joining me in this blissful video. I hope that gives you some really good ideas and sets you in a direction. Please be sure to give me one of these and comment below. Let me know what you're thinking of getting. I love hearing about your experiences. And then I will catch you in the next blissful video.